Mechanics paper, question six. I'm just taking in this information which is at the front of the mechanics paper, G 9.8, which is expected. Also, your answer to either two significant figures or three significant figures. But as I've often said, write out everything on your calculated display if you can at the end, and then do the rounding after, and then you've got all bases covered. Going into the question, uh, I'm just absorbing this information in here. We're talking about velocity given expressed, it's expressed in, in vector form, isn't it? And it's got, it's in terms of T. Um, and then it goes on to say, when T equals one, P is at the point A, okay. When T equals four, P is at the point B, okay. When two different positions. And then it goes on to say, find the exact distance AB. And that's the key bit of information for me, because at the moment I can see I've got an uh, equation for V, velocity and I want distance which is going to come from displacement so that's really my main clue into what area of mechanics this is and I'm recording that perhaps you've uh, seen that type of um, layout where you've got displacement velocity and acceleration and you differentiate um, that way with, with respect to time to go from displacement velocity and acceleration here I'm at velocity and I want to go back up to displacement. So that way would be to integrate. So that is using all the clues that I've got there to uh, tell me which mathematics I'm going to have to employ at first. Um, so if I want to go to S, I'm going to have to integrate v with respect to time. Uh, let's do that then on this function. Um, recall that if you've got a vector notation here, you can differentiate and integrate separately. So do this one separately, do that one separately. Uh, let's see then, s would be integrating that is raising the power by one and dividing by the new power, isn't it? So raise that by one, I get positive a half. So I'd have t to the power of positive a half. And dividing by a half is the same as timesing by two. And that's I. Remember, all these things really are vectors, so they should have an underbar there. And T isn't, if you recall, T is always scalar. The other term then, I've got minus 4T. Uh, so again, the power goes up to two, and I divide by the new power. So I'd have minus 4 over 2 is just 2 t squared, and again, I've got the notation at the end there. Now, um, crucially, we didn't have limits with this integration, so it's indefinite, which means we have to remember there should be a plus c on the end, because there might have been a constant term there. How are we going to determine if there is? Well, you'll have some fixed points, and here they are in this question here, a couple of fixed points. So I know when t equals one, p is at the point A, and t equals four, p is at the point B, and I want the distance between them. So let's go with uh, when t equals four, I would get s being uh, let's see, two to the power four to the power of half, that's the same as square rooting, isn't it? I minus two, I'm being very careful to substitute into brackets because I want to reduce that error. Let's see then, so here I would have a displacement of two times two is four I, four squared 16 times two minus 32 J And then I'm going to do the same thing. Remember, this is displacement at the moment, isn't it? Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for when t equals the other value, when t equals 1. Perhaps I should have done them the, the other way around. Doesn't matter, though. So when t equals 1, we get s would be 2 times square root of 1 i minus two times one squared 
and simplifying would give me square root of one is one, so I've still got two i. One squared is also one, so I've got minus two j there. So I can say that I've done this around because if you're looking for the difference, you'd normally do the the later one take away the earlier one. We could say perhaps that the coordinates of this is going to be 4 and minus 32, and the coordinates at this time would be 2 and minus 2. So you could map that out if it helps you think about it. Uh, the C's are going to cancel because you're going to do one take away the other. So they would go. Let's have a look at this though. So um, two along, that's my origin. I've got two along, two down. So I'm going to just sort of assume that's somewhere like that. Two along, two and minus two. Uh, that was when T was one. That was um, point A, wouldn't it? So that would be point A. And then I'm just having a graphical representation of this, aren't I? So four along minus 32 down, that'd be something like right down there wouldn't it so 4 minus 32 and that was point B so I'm looking for this difference between them here the distance between them is the direct distance isn't it um, currently I've got things in terms of I and J which are vertical and horizontal um, so I'm looking at um, a bit of Pythagoras there aren't I so this was 4 minus 32 well, let's just close that off uh, so horizontally, the difference is 2 to 4, so this is a difference of 2. And vertically, I've gone from minus 2 down to minus 32, so this must be a distance of 30. And from there, I'm going straight into Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse. And then I think I'm, I'm there for this question. So what have we got? We've got 2 squared plus 30 squared. I haven't put minus 30 because I knew I was just talking about the distance uh, rather than minus 30 to show that it was moving downwards. So I have, uh, I'm just acknowledging that it would be minus 30, uh, but I don't need it because I'm just talking about the distance, not the direction. Uh, here we go then, it's running through Pythagoras. 30 squared uh, is 900, isn't it? So I've got root 904. Would I use my calculator get to get it into a decimal? No, I might use it to, uh, and I've just used my calculator here, to cancel it down. Though either one of these is the correct answer. I'm not putting it as a decimal because up here it has said exact distance. And if I put that as a decimal, it would not be exact because at some point I would have to round that. So this is very um, deliberately being left as a third. So look out for that in the exam paper, that word exact has implications.